Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. As you can hear, I am pretty much almost completely over my cold, just still a little bit stuffed up, so basically back to my normal sparkling self, thankfully, and we're going to kick things off today with a little something from Intel. Now these are some comments that Intel have made in a recent video posted on their Twitter account featuring none other than Raja Kadori, who of course is now the senior, senior excuse me, VP and Chief Architect over at Intel, and they discussed a few things in this video, but the thing that I want to focus on here today is their comments regarding their graphics, and one thing that they mentioned in the video that they're targeting is photorealism, and Roger spoke a little bit about his vision for the future, so what did he actually have to say? He said, quote, when it comes to discrete graphics, my team will be starting off from zero. But, he continues to say, my team is actually really excited about this because they see it as an opportunity for unleashing discrete graphics from the constraints of integrated graphics. And there were some several other comments made during the video as well. Um, another thing that was interesting was how they're apparently looking at this sort of evolution and uh, across multiple fronts of architectures. And obviously the graphics is going to be one of those. And during their Intel Architecture Day, they did, of course, detail the Sunny Cove architecture as well as, of course, um, telling us exactly what was going on with 10NM and all that sort of stuff. So it's obviously pure speculation. They don't really go into the nitty gritty of a specific product or a set of oncoming features. It's more just comments regarding their broader vision for graphics. So let's speculate a little bit about what he could mean when he says photorealism. Now obviously that's been kind of the sort of holy grail as it were for a few years and I would say that graphics have gotten to a point where they're almost almost there but obviously we can continue to grow and change and discover new technologies and maybe in 10 years of graphics today we'll kind of look like the graphics of the ps1 era to those people we, we don't know obviously what revolutions are going to happen but what realistically could intel be talking about here and the first thing you're probably thinking about is probably real-time ray tracing that's something they might be looking at as of course lighting is the main issue I would say to achieving photorealism, getting realistic lighting nailed down is definitely something that developers all over need to be looking at. So it's very possible that he's referring to, but it's also possible that he's not referring to that. It's kind of hard to say that he was talking so broadly, but I would say there's a fairly likely chance that he's at least inferring towards real-time ray tracing there. Personally, I am very excited to see exactly what Intel have in store for us when it comes to graphics. You know, I spoke the other day about Frank Azor's comments to, um, to the India Times about how much of a task Intel have ahead of them. And Raja himself addressed it in his comments by saying that they are indeed starting from zero. And obviously they have years of experience to go up against with both NVIDIA and AMD. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what they deliver with Intel XE. And of course, the Jupiter sound, which is following from Arctic sound, which we have heard nothing about, of course, given that we don't know all that much about Intel XE itself yet. But let's move on to something interesting regarding NVIDIA. Now, before I get into this topic, I just want to stress that these are comments from an analyst. This is a rumor, nothing confirmed. This is just an analyst's take on this particular event. So do just keep that in mind before I go any further. So, what am I actually talking about? Well, according to this analyst, NVIDIA have not been 100% honest about cryptocurrency earnings in order to try and mitigate a stock crash. And this is according to the Royal Bank of Canada capital market analyst Mitch Steves. And you might go, okay, hang on, but NVIDIA have been having issues with their stock, and you are quite right. Their stock dropped 19% in November and then 50% in December. And at the moment, their stock is about 50% down. So they have bounced back a little from this, 
but obviously stocks fluctuate, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to wait and see as to what happens the rest of the year, but they have definitely taken a bit of a beating. However, what Steve is actually saying here is that when actually looking at the hash rates and looking at the volume of Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies that were mined between April 2017 to July 2018, he has estimated that roughly $2.75 billion should have been made in sales and according to him again Nvidia should have got about three quarters of this with AMD hoovering up the rest. So we go okay so he's made a lot of sort of not assumptions but obviously he's doing a lot of sort of guesswork, educated guesswork but still. AMD's recent forecast and financials have actually kind of backed up the fact that AMD would have taken the, the sort of last quarter as it were. Just to show what I mean they have said they expect revenue of 1.25 billion, 24% lower than last year. However, Nvidia's forecast was 2.7 billion, but it has recently dropped to 2.2, which is some of which what has caused their recent stock issues. Now, I do have a bit of a direct statement here from Mitch, which says, quote, we think Nvidia generated 1.95 billion in total revenue related to crypto slash blockchain. This compares to the company statement that it generated around 602 million over the same time period. So, I guess what he is suggesting here is that NVIDIA are sort of concealing the revenue actually made by putting it into other projects or perhaps having some sort of deal with OEMs to sort of help take some of the load off of them when it comes to the amount of Pascal GPs left over because of course that is one of the main issues they are having that they had a whole bunch of Pascal GPUs made in the height of the cryptocurrency craze and obviously now it has dropped to a much less insane level and Nvidia are left with a ton of Pascal GPUs just lying around so Obviously, with touring out, people are less likely to buy a Pascal GPU. Not, you know, it's not even like it's never going to buy them because obviously Pascal GPUs are going to be significantly cheaper than touring, while still giving a decent performance, especially if you're getting topper ends like 1070, 1070 Ti sort of level. Um, it's still going to be a decent performance without all the ray tracing, but a lot of people don't care about ray tracing. The point, the point being, they've got all this stock lying around and they've also got these other stock issues that I've already mentioned. So it seems basically saying that Nvidia has sort of obfuscated their cryptocurrency earnings to their shareholders, which, if true, doesn't particularly bode well for their future profits, given that the cryptocurrency market is showing no sign of bouncing back, especially not to the crazy degree that it once was. Now, obviously, this is a very bold claim from him. That is why I stressed that this is purely his take on things this is his opinion this is a rumor do not take this as anything other than what it is so we'll have to wait and see because obviously if this is the case the truth will probably come to light if it isn't the case then obviously nothing will happen but it is a very interesting claim to make nonetheless but Speaking of financials, we actually have something from Sony. So what do we actually have here? Well, we have the second quarter financial results for the fiscal year of 2018 from Sony. Yes, fiscal years are weird. Don't at me. Nothing to do with me. Anyway, so they have shared their financial results for the second quarter and the message is overall positive. We do see some dips here and there, but overall Sony did pretty damn well for themselves. They posted a 2.93 billion profits this quarter which is a 44% increase the same quarter year over year. We did see a slight dip in revenue, however, for the same quarter to 21.3 billion, which is down over 10% from a year ago. Now, interestingly, Sony did say that they had a 10% gain on sales in the gaming division, but they did see a drop in profit, as I just discussed, due to sales of the PS4 starting to drop off, as, of course, the game, the game, the console has now been out six years, and, of course, as I keep saying, the heat from Nintendo with the Switch is getting all the hotter. And obviously they did have the usual price cuts and holiday sales and promotional pricing and yada yada yada, which obviously cut into their profits a little bit. And this basically resulted in a income, operating income should I say, of 667 million down from 779 million in the same quarter for the gaming division. So again, this is apparently down to cheaper unit prices and not doing as well in the holiday season thanks to obviously the, the system's been out for six years and then Switch is doing very, very well. But we can surmise from the rest of what they have said is that the PS4 is now 
going to be at roughly 94 million consoles sold, which is frankly insane. Because you may remember from the last quarter they, that they said they had 86 million PS4 shipped. And this time they said they shipped an additional 8.1, so that's where I've gotten that figure of 94. So we're most likely going to be seeing them breach that 100 million mark, which is pretty crazy. In terms of actual games, um, we did see 87.2 million PS4 games sold. And interestingly, 37% of those were actually digital, which I'm actually mildly surprised at. Console is a, is a place where I personally prefer physical Obviously, on PC, it's almost 100% digital. In fact, it's all digital, to be honest. Maybe one or two discs still kicking around, but a lot of them just came with a Steam code in the box. So, you know. Um, so it's interesting to see such a strong digital download portion there because a lot of the pricing for digital games on console, especially for like a AAA game, are, in my personal opinion, a touch high. But, of course, you know, that's my personal opinion. Clearly, 37% of people who own a PS4 disagree. So the long story short is basically that in... NVIDIA? Brain? Are you okay? <laughs> it's been a long day. Sony! That's the word I was looking for. Sony, the gaming division, has been doing pretty well. So despite the slight dip in gaming profits, Sony overall has been doing very, very well. And it's not exactly surprising, again, that we are seeing the sales for this dip down a bit. Because, well, a lot of people wanted a PS4, probably got one by now. So let's end things on a good note, shall we? And this is thanks to Reddit. I came across this on the r slash games subreddit. It will not find me by username on there. It is not anything to do with the channel. Anyway, so what do we got? We have a trademark, which I think will make a lot of you happy. I know it's made Paul happy. And when I saw it, I messaged him like, you got to check this out. Anyway, what we have is that EA have trademarked Jade Empire. That's all we have for the moment. But we have a trademark that was files on the 25th of January. So are they planning something? Definitely. Is it going to be just a mobile game? I really, really hope not. Obviously, they did do that initially with Command and Conquer, where they came out with that mobile game and the world just despaired en masse. Obviously, now they're working on something else with Command and Conquer, which is good. We're getting a real one. But Hopefully we don't see the same thing again with Jade Empire. Um, a real one would be nice, but, you know, it's basically nothing to go on other than the fact that this trademark exists. So they're at least thinking about doing a new Jade Empire game. So yeah, let the speculation commence, my friends. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.